Hello. Hi. Django, I think I can hear me on your end. I don't hear you more than once. Oh, okay. Oh, well, that's fine. How are we all doing out there, guys? Discord continues to hate Django, um, but in the past, he's unfrozen like 10 minutes into the stream. So we're just going to hope that that pattern continues. Uh, but we're I, here. I can and confirm my Ammon. <laughs> um, but we're here to talk about Clone Wars, Star Wars Clone Wars Season 7. Uh, Clone Wars Saved, it's here. It's coming tomorrow for those of you who have Disney+. Plus. Uh, for those of you who do not have Disney+, Plus, at the end of March, I think, is when you'll have access to it. Um, but have no fear, because you can watch the first four episodes in animatic form on YouTube right now. So, you know, you could always go for that uh, if you don't want to wait for what the first four episodes will bring. I've watched them in animatic form, actually, and they're, they're really good. Uh, I know you have not. Take them down. They might take them down, yeah, now that um, the actual episodes are going to be out. That's been one thing that's really interesting about Clone Wars is uh, Filoni, for all that he doesn't reveal information, um, he was pretty forthcoming after the season was done, or after we thought we were done and we weren't getting anything. Um, and, like, we knew from Clone Wars, like, Legacy, like, Dark Disciple obviously was based on unmade episodes. Uh, Darth Maul, Son of Dathomir, was based on unmade episodes. You can watch the animatics for Bad Batch and The Crystal Crisis on YouTube right now, um, both of which are really good arcs. I haven't rewatched really Crystal Crisis in a long time. Um, but it's been interesting. And then, you know, with the Ahsoka novel, we already know how the final epi episodes of uh the season actually kind of go um, right yeah not beat by beat play by play but the broad strokes so it's kind of interesting to go into this and i'm used to any kind of felony project with it it's all cloak and daggers and like even twitter today has been all about him stirring things back up that ahsoka might not actually be dead um because we heard her in the world between world but then to go into clone wars and actually feel like feel like I kind of know generically what's coming. I'm sure not everything, but uh, right. big stuff. I don't know. Uh, but how are you feeling headed into this final season? I mean, I'm really excited about it, honestly. I mean, one, I, I don't have the kind of in-depth understanding that people who are like super duper fanboys and have been following stuff ever mm -hmm. since then have, you know, so I, I don't know as much about what's coming as, as you do. Right. I mean, I, I know what we know about the Siege of Mandalore just from the Ahsoka novel, but right. And I, and I know like the gist of the the Bad Batch stuff, but I haven't watched them. Mm -hmm. um, so so like there there's that, and and I'd be curious to know whether or not you feeling like you know what's coming makes you like it more or less than you than you might otherwise. But I think well the thing that I'm most mm -hmm. I'm most excited about the fact, and I posted this on Twitter earlier, um, that I I never watch these week to week. Right. Like, I only right. watched the entire series after it ended. Mm -hmm. uh, because I mean, I, I attempted to at several points and just couldn't get into it because, like the the episodes I happened to watch were the ones that I was least likely to enjoy. Um, but uh, so like I tried to get on a couple of points and just couldn't, mm -hmm. and so I didn't watch the series until it was over. Right. Um, and then you know the the uh, season six dropped all at once. Yep. And so like right. I watched that when it came out, but there was no like like week to week anticipation like being part of that mm -hmm. that kind of fandom you know like the way we've had like the mandalorian right um, or even well, rebels cuz we you and i oh, both Oh sure yeah cuz you and i both watched rebels and, and, when it came out yeah and and resistance too like yep. i never had that for for the clone wars and and i'm excited for that yeah. um, even if even if some people know a lot about what's going to come and there may not be big surprises i'm mm -hmm. excited just to be a part of like it while it's happening this time around oh for sure well, and I think, even though I've said that I kind of know some of what happens in some of the episodes, I think it's a mistake anytime Filoni's involved to be like, I know everything that's going to happen, because I'm, right, sure yeah. I'm sure I don't. Um, but no, I'm excited uh, to watch these again. I'm really happy that Disney Plus has been doing episode by episode, like weekly anyway. I know there's some people mm -hmm. who don't feel that way. I, I like it. 
I don't like the stress and pressure of a whole season dropped and I have to choose between enjoying it at my own pace or just inhaling it so I can use social media again. Um, right. And for us, just the stress of having to review episodes all at once would have been a lot. Uh, so I'm, I'm personally really happy with this decision. As far as how I feel going into it this time, you know, it's not unlike the prequel trilogy in general, because, like, we all kind of knew how the prequel trilogy was going to end. We all knew what was right. going to happen to Anakin, and we know what happens to Ahsoka. We know what happens to Rex because of Rebels. So there's very few right. fates on the line um, going into this. But there were very few fates on the line in the prequel trilogy. You know, the characters that were going to die, we knew they were going to die. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I guess it... it considering this takes place during the prequel trilogy it doesn't feel that if anything it actually feels weirdly more appropriate like it for something that's probably going to end alongside revenge of the sith it feels very much like going into revenge of the sith right well it's a very different feeling right than, mm -hmm. than the speculation about going into you know rise of skywalker right yeah so where like literally anything could happen and and lots of things did yep um, <laughs> I almost texted you this the other day, like, what if Filoni just said, like, screw canon and, like, made made choices in these that, like, overturned, like, like what if, like, Ahsoka just dies? And then he's like, well, what about Rebels? And he's like, what, what's Rebels? I have no idea what you're talking I about. I don't know what like, Rebels is. Rebels there's, lives? There's, what? There's only the Clone Wars and nothing else. <laughs> It'd be like, um, Rebels was just a dream the whole time. No, I, uh... <laughs> I I never I feel like Filoni loves messing with people, so I feel like there might be something wacky, uh, but we'll see. But this will all be, you know, I think for people who are expecting something big like what we eventually got in Rebels, I think that might be a mistake. Mm -hmm. We were talking about this a little bit before the stream. I don't think we're gonna personally. I don't think we're going to see episodes that drastically tie into Rebels or Rogue One or Solo or anything kind of Disney era. Obviously, we have baby Caleb Doom in the trailer um, there with, with his master. But, right. you know, it's easy to add somebody in the background. And I, I absolutely think, you know, now with Siege of Mandalore episodes that we could get references to Clan Wren that we probably wouldn't have had otherwise. But I think it's just going to be references, characters in the background, unnamed soldier 25, is going to be a, a character we might know now, stuff like that. I right. think we're going to, by and large, get the scripts we would have gotten. And as somebody, and this, this is going to be different for everyone, but be, as somebody who watched The Clone Wars weekly, I saw the movie in theaters at midnight. Like, that was what this show was for me. I Like, I understand it already has more seasons. It Really, it has as many seasons as Rebels and Resistance combined. So, like, yeah. I, I get people wanting more content for Rebels and Resistance, and I certainly do. Um, but Clone Wars is the one that got canceled, where Rebels right. didn't get canceled, and I choose to believe that Resistance didn't get canceled. I want Clone Wars to get its ending um, more so than I want it to pay tribute to other series that got their ending. Um, right. So, personally... Well, and I think it would be a mistake to... I mean, even as somebody that has a preference for Rebels over the Clone Wars, as mm -hmm. much as I love the Clone Wars, Rebels will always be, mm -hmm. you know, a different thing for me. Um, but, like, even as somebody that feels that way about Rebels, I think it would be a mistake to make the last season of the Clone Wars about anything but the Clone, the Clone Wars. Wars. Yeah. I you know? know, because, like, in this this will be a reference that means nothing to you, but just go with it for a second, because this is, this is, this is what I do for a living, right? I just make obscure references that nobody understands. Yeah. But... Um, in in the series Star Trek Enterprise, the season yep. like the series finale episode, my favorite episode of um, of Star Trek. In the very last episode, like the whole episode takes place in like Star Trek: The Next Generation timeline, and they're on like the holodeck, like like which is this like uh, VR experience if you're like Star Wars or Star Trek. Gotcha. Um, but it, it made the end of the series about this other thing, and it ah, didn't okay. give those characters like an ending on their own right. It, it right. said, hey, you've watched three seasons of this show, but instead of giving you a, a, an ending that's about these characters, mm -hmm. we're going to make it about these other characters instead. Gotcha. And, and like yeah. that really robs, robs those, those shows and those characters of that moment. And so like I was thrilled to death to see Caleb Doom 
in in the right. background of, of the shot because mm-hmm. of how I feel about. I mean, Kanan's my favorite Star Wars character. He's like he's right there. Yeah. Um, he's he's one of my favorites. But like, I don't want I don't want an episode to be about Caleb Dune. I want Ahsoka. Mm-hmm. And I want Anakin and Obi Wan because this is their show. Yep. And you know, and I, I want. I mean, if Hondo could just be there all the time, that would be fine with me. Well, yeah, but, obviously. But like, I, I don't want this to be Rebels. You know, Episode Zero. I want right. this to be Clone Wars Season Seven. Right. Um. And and I I don't expect it to be anything other than that. I I, um, I would agree with that. Um. And welcome, Nolan. Good to have you here. And Dr. Holocron. And Holocron says, what if Anakin's powers actually double? That, that would be fun. That was one of those, like, strange Revenge of the Sith quotes that are like, okay, how are we going to make this make sense? Because it made sense when Anakin and Dooku hadn't met in three years, but now they saw each other last week. So how did Anakin's powers double? <laughs> Just go with it. Just go with it. Star Wars never breaks its own canon unless it's the Rise of Skywalker. So, you know, it's going to make sense. Yep. Perfect yeah. sense. Perfect <laughs> sense. <laughs> um, but no, I, 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 I'm I, on the same page with you on all of that. And I'm, I'm excited to see it in. Um, we've been going through rewatching some of the episodes. I'm not going to make it all the way through my rewatch uh, before um, tomorrow. But I've made it through the Order 66 arc. I know you just recently rewatched the Ahsoka and Order 66 arcs. And, like, yeah. I, I remember like, loving them, and I remember knowing they were really good, but I haven't watched them in a long time. And they're really good. They really are. <laughs> like, they are, like, I would put them right up there with the movies, honestly, and what they're able to do and the emotions that they're able to tell and capitalize on. Silly Putty, welcome. Good to have you here. And, well, uh, and that's one of the things that I mean when I say I want this show to have an ending in its own right too. Yeah. Because when I finished when I finished that Ahsoka arc yesterday, I texted mm-hmm. you this. I'm like, this would be a sucky way to end this. Like, right? If that had actually been the series finale, like like it's just such a like she just walks off yeah. and like the music is different over the credits and like it's just like if that was all we were ever going to get, like that would be such a terrible ending. Yeah. Like, like tonally for a show, and so I want this show to have have its ending. Like, an ending like this is the the one that was planned and the thing that they could build up to right. and, and not have their legs cut out from under them exactly their spider legs welcome mondo <laughs> um, <laughs> no, all the spider legs can go that's fine <laughs> <laughs> um well and i remember too because as it stood before we got season seven the end of the series is the yoda arc and mm. at some level if you don't count the movie because if you count like only what aired on television then the series starts with Yoda and ends with Yoda. So I was happy with that. Um, <laughs> right. Because anytime we're just paying special attention to Yoda, I'm more happy than, than not. Um, but it really wasn't an ending to the, the series. It was They were beautiful right. episodes. Absolutely beautiful episodes uh, that, that tell so much. But it, it just wasn't an ending to the Clone Wars. And what right. we see in the trailer, there's lines of dialogue in the trailer that are lines of dialogue uh, that are obviously not the same ones because it's Tom, uh, Tom Kane instead of Frank Oz, but it's like Yoda's lines from Revenge of the Sith are in the trailer. Um, right. And it's said in the, the same kind of cadence and pacing, which makes me think it's not Yoda just saying the same thing. Not that Clone Wars ever repeats movie lines as a reference <laughs> in any episode. Of the- oh, no, no, if that no, was no. a drinking game, you could not drive home after like it would be really bad but uh you know i i'm excited to see this show end hitting up against revenge of the sith which is kind of whatever i feel like people who were watching it as it came out and wondering how it was going to end that's what we all thought um especially because the micro series ends that way uh with the chancellor's kidnapping this is not going to end with the chancellor's kidnapping but it's we're going to see order 66 and uh I'm I'm not ready for it, but I am ready for it. Right. Well, and and I think, I mean, we've always talked about season six as season six, but like mm-hmm. it was never. I mean, not just because it's shorter, but like it was never a season. Right. Like like even the early seasons had some sort of like season arc. Mm-hmm. You know, even even like season one when a lot of stuff's out of sequence. Like, you know, but but especially by the end, like there's arcs to it, and season yeah. six was like. Here's just a couple of other things that yeah. we didn't have time to do. So Yeah, like, here's the episodes we happened to have finished before the plug was pulled. 
Right. And and so like it, I don't think it was never meant to be an ending either. It was mm-hmm. just hey, this is the leftovers, right? Yeah. Like this is just what we got and we might as well do something with it. We're not we're and not, not going to sit on complete episodes for no reason. Right. I mean, especially when like we can drive Netflix sales for them, right? Like, right. So, like there's a way to <laughs> there's a way to monetize it, so we might as well. Um I mean, and, you know, and fair enough. Those people got paid to yeah. to make those things. Yeah, so absolutely. They, they deserve. Yeah. But um no, I'm not I'm not harshing on capitalism here, you know, all the time. But <laughs> um but but like I I, I I'm just gonna keep saying this, but I, I like that we're gonna get an ending. And mm-hmm. I and I like that it's ending in the place that it makes sense for it to end. Yeah. Um and, and I'm not ready for I mean, I'm not ready for Order Sixty Six either, but I'm but I'm am ready for it. Right. Like especially knowing that these clones are gonna do it against their will, right? Because like that's mm-hmm. the whole the like point inhibitor ship thing. Ugh. But oh, that was so the, hard. Like, so, like, it, it means so much more now. Oh, but, I, I like, forgot the fact that Rex survives it doesn't yeah. make it any easier, right? Like, right. like knowing the fact that Ahsoka survives it well, doesn't we, make it any easier. We know Rex survives it, but we don't know that Rex does or doesn't enact it. That's what we don't yep. know. Yep, yep. We, we know and, he and gets like, his. We can see his his he and Wolf and Gregor. I think are the three clones that we see in yep. Rebels. And they all have scars for where they got their chips taken out, but we don't know if that was before or after Order 66. Right. I mean, and it's it's just, like, I'm ready to have my heart broken, but, yep. like, I know that that's what's going to happen. It's going to be what um, happens. When I rewatch it, I, we're going to try to stay away from specific, like, spending too much time talking about specific episodes because we'd rather just do whole streams on this. But, like, when I rewatch the Order 66 arc, um, or the chip for Order 66 arc, I've forgotten the part about the dreams and the nightmares. Yeah. And I was like, oh, f- like, the, do the clones just have nightmares of killing the Jedi every night? Like, that's right. horrifying. Well, but I was also thinking about, and I know that this was not what would, what, would, what would have been intended originally. Yeah. But I was thinking about what we know now about, like, First Order programming. Mm-hmm. Like, when they, like, make you lay awake and listen to these stuff. And, yep. like, I was like, what if what if part of, like, early tro- clone training was something like that? And we just never, we never, never knew. knew it. And, like, it's always, like, they were programmed to have that in the back of their minds. And yep. it's just been a nightmare for them. But... But like, yeah, when I guess it was Tup that says it first, he's like, yeah, yep. you know the nightmare that we all have, like, like this is, and, and, like, and like it's almost like they never mentioned it to each other, yeah. Because then, then Five says the same thing. He's like, yeah, the nightmare that we all have. have. And you're like, what, what nightmare that you all have? Oh my gosh, it makes me think of Born Identity. Do you get the headaches? I get. The headaches. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um. But you know, I uh, it's it's going to be heartbreaking, whatever happens, um, because even then, I mean, if Rex gets his chip out before Order sixty six, and he's trying to defend Ahsoka, like, does Rex have to fight clones? Yeah. And what does Rex do? And I mean, and that overlaid with the dialogue from the trailer, like, <laughs> we were made like we were made to be warriors, but we don't necessarily like this war, like, right, like. Yeah, it's their their complicated feelings of like if there wasn't a war they wouldn't exist. So they're alive only because there is a war. But there's also a war and like how they should feel about that. Right. Because and there's soldiers follow orders. And uh between the order between um bad batch episodes and Siege of Mandalor we'll get a lot. It's going to be a lot of clones and a lot of Ahsoka, which is what I think it should be here at the right. at the end. Um I mean, but like those are the two things that we don't, we didn't get the ending of. Like, yeah. if we know what happens with with Mace and with Yoda and with yep. Anakin and Obi Wan and Padme, and and the one part of the story that we don't have are the clones and Ahsoka. And Ahsoka. So, I mean, yeah. and that's the type of thing when I say I want it to end, you know, doing its its own stories. Like, like yeah. that's that's what I would want from this. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, because even if it was all just like here's Obi-Wan again, and we never got the ending for Ahsoka, like, that would still, like, I, I love Obi-Wan, but, like, I, I want to know Ahsoka's ending. The only um, Obi-Wan story I really need to know at this point is in his younger days when he was on Mandalore with Satine. That's the only, that's the story I'm waiting for. Ugh. I mean, I really want an in-depth look at his day-to-day life just as a hermit, you know, like, I want... <laughs> I want like his food diary. This is what I made for breakfast today. Was it um, that, that tweet I sent you? Was like 
it's going to be like 60% his hair blowing majestically in the wind. <laughs> yeah. Um, John Barry says, I've noticed my favorite episodes in general involve the clones as major characters. Yeah, I think a lot of my favorite ones are too. Um, and that's just I mean, a, I think that's... Go ahead. No, I was going to say, and that's a big credit too to Dee Bradley Baker who had to play the same character a million different ways. Well, and I think that that's the benefit of this series mm-hmm. is that you see these these clones as people. Yeah. I mean, if if you if all you ever get is the films, mm-hmm. then then you know like two or three clone names, like you know Commander Cody, yeah, because you know Obi Wan talks about him. But apart from that, like you don't know who these people are, right? And like th- that's the whole point, right? That's the whole point of the Clone Wars is mm-hmm. that it's all droids and clones, and they're faceless and nameless and reproducible and replaceable. Yeah. But but this show made them into people. Mm-hmm. And it says uh, no. These are, these are people you should care about that are individuals, yep. and like that's that's so much of the emotional pull of this. And this is why you know I've struggled with people who who only want to watch season seven, and they they'll like ask what do I need to watch because I'm like, well, if you're not watching some of this, like some of this stuff may not be the most relevant to like right. what's going on in season seven. But like if if you don't feel for for Rex and right. for for Wolf, then then I, I I don't know that you're gonna get what what I think you can get out of season seven. Right, you know? and I understand like wanting to watch it with fans as it comes out, so you can have that feeling. Sure, right. But it, it, but you're not you're just not gonna respond to it. It's kind of like, you know, oh, I watched Avengers one in 2012. I'm gonna go see Endgame. I know. I know people that did that. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, who is this ant person? Like, what what is what is this Wakanda place? I'm so confused. I'm like, well, there's like 20 movies that you didn't watch. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so good. Um, Dr. Hologron says, we hope we get a novel about that, presumably about uh, Satine and Obi-Wan, and I agree with Mr. Rez. Also, welcome Mr. Rez's response of, uh... oh no, Mr. Rez is just talking. Silly Putty then follows up with Claudia Gray. Oh no, Holocron said it. Silly Putty, okay, I'm getting confused, guys, sorry. You're all here, you're all wonderful, and you're all saying things, but I agree with, I would love a Claudia Gray writing Obi-Wan and Satine. That's what I was hoping Master and Apprentice was going to be, uh, and it wasn't, but that's okay, because Master <laughs> Apprentice is still my favorite Star Wars book, anyway. Uh, I mean, but while we're talking about books, I think the thing that is most likely to get a canon hit here mm-hmm. is is the Ahsoka novel. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, it already has with the lightsaber blades. I think... Right. Future printings are going to change it because when she thinks back to Seizure Mandalore, she remembers her green sabers and they're they're blue in the trailer. I think future right. printings are supposed to change it to blue. Yeah. Um, but I mean, that's to me that's such a minor thing. Like, oh right. gee darn, the the you know I, I've read worse uh, canon issues, but we'll see what else happens as a result of the book. And I I think this ties into. Um, the uh, I think this ties into why we never got more stories with Ahsoka because like people have been talking about yeah. like you know yeah she got her own novel uh, but I think the only reason why she got a novel is because Dave didn't think he was going to be able to go back to her story very much um, right but you know why hasn't she had her own comic series why isn't she got her own animated series or something like that you know people have noticed that as is a glaring um, a gap, but I, I think that it's also very plausible that once Dave knew he was going to be able to come back and finish Clone Wars, which he would have known years before it got, maybe not years, but a good portion of time before it got announced because they had to finish them, and animation takes time. Right. Um, that he put the kibosh on new Ahsoka content so he could tell Ahsoka in the Clone Wars. Right. And that's just that's just kind of the the way it goes. Um, Nolan says, oh, geez, it's just started. Oh, it just started snowing. Crazy. If where you live, that's wild. It's like the apocalypse. Uh, Gina, welcome, welcome. Glad you could make it too. We're having a good time talking about what we want to see in Clone Wars and how much we're all going to cry. Like, so much crying. Just lots of weeping. <laughs> you know, speaking, though, of Ahsoka, I noticed that was something... Rewatching Ahsoka's arc. First of all, I realized I don't think I watched Ahsoka's arc since it's been on TV. Yeah. Um, because I owned seasons one through three on DVD and then never owned four and five. So I didn't, so it would have only been once it went to Netflix and I'm not sure I ever rewatched them. Um, and they were, they were painful to watch. Yeah. 
And I'm not really sure. Were. I don't think I remember them being as painful the first time I watched them, but I also didn't know it was going to end with Ahsoka leaving the Order the first time I watched right. those. Because um, we, we had no idea that that was how it was going to end, especially because the series wasn't supposed to end there. I would have no reason to think that anything like that would happen to her at the end of those episodes. I thought everything was going to be fine. Um, right. And so there was less pain because there was that less, like, I didn't know what was building up to. And I think I just felt differently about Ahsoka during the Clone Wars versus what happened with Rebels and when I got the novel. Because um, mm -hmm. I was one of those people, I, I was one of the people who didn't like Ahsoka when we first got her. I didn't hate her. She didn't keep me from watching the show. But I was like, okay, she's the precocious <laughs> character that they put in for the kids to like, and she's going to be there sometimes, and I'm just going to care about the other episodes, and it's going to be fine. Uh, and she grew on me, and she grew on me, and she grew on me, and I liked her by the end of the series, but I didn't, like, when Clone Wars was ending, I was more worried about whether or not Clone Wars was going to mess with canon in Revenge of the Sith, and how are they going to explain not mentioning Ahsoka in Revenge of the Sith, and I was worried about what was going to happen to Ahsoka. Right. And then, after the journey we got with her in Rebels, and reading her novel, now, like, I care about Ahsoka. You know, I'm going mm -hmm. into this last season... Not just like, oh, she's there and she's a cool character, but like actively being interested in what's going to happen to her and what's going to go down. And rewatching these episodes, right. they were painful in a way that they weren't before uh, when she was just kind of there. You know what I mean? Right. Well, and I, I definitely feel the same way because I was one of those people that didn't watch The Clone Wars because mm -hmm. of, of Ahsoka. Yeah. Like, like I, I tried and it's all Sky Guy and R2 -E and I'm like, no thanks. <laughs> I like, had a hard is, time too. Like, like this was this was not for me, and I'm like, if this is what this is, like, and this, this is why I always refer to this too. The the second time I tried to get on board was when season four was starting, and it's the the, the, the water, water episodes with the Gungans, and I'm like, nope, this is like this is not not it for me. Like, this is not like I thought this was good. What is this? Like it's and and now I, I well I, I won't say I like those episodes now because I still don't, but but now I love Ahsoka, and like right. I have this connection to her. And and I think you're right that knowing how that arc ends mm -hmm. makes it harder to watch those episodes because yep. you keep like the first time I, I would have watched it saying oh no it's gonna work out figure out the end you know fine at the end of the day mm -hmm. and knowing that it doesn't work out for her yep like it it kind of overshadows the whole thing because like every time and I know we don't want to go into like specific right. specifics too much. But, like, every time there's another thing that happens that makes her look more and more guilty, mm -hmm. like, you realize just how deep that hole is getting, and you right. know she's not going to come out of it. Yep. And that makes it all the more tragic now because you know how it ends. Yep. Well, and especially to imagine how much... The, 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 uh, the arc doesn't specifically talk about it, but you just know Palpatine has his hand in all of that. Um, oh, right. Especially sure, yeah. because of how actively involved Tarkin was. Um, yeah. But uh, let's see here. Silly says, did they ever explain why lightsabers change colors other than bleeding to get red? Um, no, I don't think they have, and they might or might not. It's possible that because Ahsoka's sabers turn blue, I don't know if it's going to be still her crystals or if Anakin puts different crystals in them. Because uh, we know mm -hmm. that Anakin tinkers with them, I think. I, I, there was like a line in a scene they showed somewhere. Um... But I, I don't know, maybe because he tinkers them, they turn blue because Anakin's playing with them, so the, the crystals adapt to Anakin. Maybe they're different crystals. I, I, I don't think they've explained it, but I don't think there's been reason to yet, if that makes sense. Right. They, they might talk about it when we actually get to the episodes. Yeah, all we know about is bleeding them red and then, like, healing them after that, right? Yep. So, and, so like, if it's not... Either too red or back from red. We don't really know anything. Know. Yeah, and even then, uh, I don't know if Ahsoka bleeding them or unbleeding them so that they turn white. I don't know if they turned white to reflect Ahsoka or if they turned white because all healed crystals turn white. Um, right, or you know that's what their original color would have been. Right. I don't. Yeah, that's true too. If that that's just back to what there is. So there's there's still a little bit of ambiguity out there with. Kyber crystal moon ring, mood rings as they exist in current canon, <laughs> but that's a whole other thing. Um, but no, I'm I'm that's something else I'm excited to see. Uh, Nolan says doesn't Legends or something? Yes, Legends says that, but not, new canon has changed it, so the the Legends explanation is not true anymore. But you are correct, that's what Legends says. Um, but uh, no, I'm 
that I mean, that's something that'll be cool, and that could be something that we get an explanation of, or it could just be they're blue now, just like things fly now. Um, right. So we'll see. But uh, no, I, that's I'm happy. I'm happy to know that Anakin and and Ahsoka see each other again before the Rebel season two finale. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because. Like, if it was just, hey, I'm piecing out and leaving the Jedi Order, and hey, you're Sith Lord now, like, that's... I mean, Star Wars is tragic, but that's exceptionally tragic. But, uh, then to to know that they could at least have some kind of interaction, to know Anakin can know that Ahsoka's fine, you know? Uh, right. And she's making it out there in the real world. Which is the... So... What I what I think the three arcs are because there's twelve episodes. There's probably going to be four episodes in arc, um, unless there's like a random one shot in there somewhere. But we have Bad Batch, which is four episodes. Siege of Mandalore, which has to be four episodes because it's going to be their big finale. Um, right. And then there's going to be something called um, it's been kind of referred to as Ahsoka's Walkabout. I don't know as much about that one. There is information out there about it. I haven't looked into those myself. Um, but it's Ahsoka in the lower levels of Coruscant, like kind of finding her way. Um, yeah. And that's something I'm personally really interested in, because we don't have a lot of stories about what happens if a Jedi leaves the Order. Like, yeah, you're, you're, you have a lot of skills and you can do a lot of things, but you, like, you don't know how to pay bills. You don't know how to like live <laughs> somewhere. Um, and right. like, what do you do as a Jedi who, with no possessions, you have the clothes on your back um, and you have to go out in the galaxy? And, and what do you do? And especially because when Ahsoka's leaving, the war's not over, so she doesn't have to hide her Force powers or, right. else, or else death. But she still may want to hide them because um, what we see from her arc is that public opinion of the Jedi is at an all time low. Um, and that's right. a big reason why her arc goes the way that it does. Um, not everybody's Count of Sereno can just, right. you know, go like, be royalty. I'll just go back to my home world and have my funeral moon um but uh yeah so we'll i'm i'm interested in that uh to see what she does both from an ahsoka standpoint but just uh i'm a sucker for jedi stories in general so i'm i'm excited right. to see how that goes yeah. um but uh it, and the animation looks so good i mean like clone wars animation is good anyway it's it's wild to go like to look at season one compared to season six because they obviously got way better and you would hope they'd get better just because you'd hope right. everything gets better. But um, but I mean even when Clone Wars started, it wasn't. I mean it was doing amazing things for a TV show budget. There weren't shows that were doing three D right. animation on a weekly basis, twenty two episodes a year like that. Um, I guess that helps when you have George Lucas money. But, uh, well, and seeing them all in high definition on Disney Plus has been uh, yeah. a, a, a pleasurable experience. Also, yeah, it's it's been good. Um, so I'm excited to get to see those, especially with Bad Batch. Like I said, I've I've seen those episodes, but I've seen them in animatic form. So like, people's yeah. arms don't bend. You just see like figures move across the screen and be Bradley Baker's talking. So like, I'm excited <laughs> to see them fully rendered and and realized. Um, but Clone Wars is something special for me. Cause like I said, I when I got into it, Revenge of the Sith had come out three years prior, and we didn't know we were getting Disney Star Wars, and Clone Wars was going to be it. Like, we didn't know what... Like, if I could go back in time and tell 2008 Yoda Bauer that um, there was going to be more Star Wars movies someday, I you know, I would have lost my mind. And uh, it's funny, Clone Wars is what brought me to the original Star Wars forums, which... That's brought what me I was to Port, to say. Which is what brought me to Port Haven. Uh, because when it was Star Wars films, when it was the prequels, I knew people in the real world that saw them, and I could talk to them about it, but I didn't know anybody watching the Clone Wars. So I went to StarWars.com, used to have forums, um, and I went there to find people to talk to Star Wars, or talk to about the Clone Wars, which was my first time on an internet forum in 2008 when they were dying. So like all things, <laughs> I come to it several years later. And um, and then the forum shut down, and then that's where Port Haven came from. So Clone Wars has a very special place in my heart because it was, right. it's what I had when I didn't think I was gonna have more Star Wars. Uh, yeah. Well, and it's it's ironic given that I didn't like it at all at the time. Yeah. 
if it were not for the Clone Wars, we would never, never. have been friends. We never would have met. Not even met yeah. if it had not been for the Clone Wars. So that's wild to think about. Um, shout out to the Dark Moose wherever he is. I think he lurks in these streams because he's always retweeting them and he never says anything. Probably because he it's hard for him to type with those who's. Yeah. So it's it's a little bit difficult. I mean, he's pretty internet savvy for a moose, but you know, um, I I'm just I'm pumped. I like it, what I like too about Clone Wars is I mean, it really is different from both Rebels and Resistance. Uh, and no, like I love Rebels and Resistance too, obviously. But like Rebels and Resistance, you got to know a crew and you stayed with that crew the whole time. And I mm -hmm. I can see why some people would prefer that. Uh, that storytelling because it you you really get to know those characters and spend time with that core family um, But I always liked that Clone Wars was an anthology show and I think it had to be for Clone Wars, especially if you're gonna make three right. years Stretch out more than three seasons like you needed to make it an anthology show Not everything can happen in real time. Yeah <laughs> Unlike my other favorite show um, but uh, I, I liked that you would get to spend time with Ahsoka and Anakin and Obi-Wan. But then you would have clone episodes. Uh, but then you mm -hmm. would have Boba Fett episodes. And then you would have, um, you know, pirate episodes. And you could have Night Sister episodes. Like, I lost my mind when the season three trailer came out and it had Night Sisters in it. And right. I, like, I was like, it did what in, what in the things? Um, and so I, I'm excited to get a, like, this season won't feel quite as much like anthology storytelling because we're going to be largely with the characters that we know for the vast majority of it. But I hope Clone Wars is not the last anthology Star Wars TV show that we get. Right. Well, I mean, it's... You know, we, we always talked about how the prequel trilogy was on such a larger scale than the original trilogy anyway. Mm -hmm. And so, like, a show set in that time frame kind of had to be that way Yep. Just because of the scale of, of the conflict that it's depicting and like what the world is like. And it's it's not the story of, you know, one farm boy from the middle of nowhere who makes it big and finds his destiny. It's the story of turmoil in the galaxy and it has to be on a galactic scale. Mm -hmm. And there's there's no way to do that. Like it, it could not have been rebels. Like it had right. to be what it was just because of what it was trying to show. Um and that's not to say that we couldn't have you know, a, a High Republic show do the same thing, you know, right. that, that give like another, you know, large scale story, but Rebels and Resistance are different because it's not the kind of story they're telling. But this was the only way to do the Clone Wars. Um, is this I mean and like the like the whole like you know, nineteen forties newsreel kind of, you know, intro to every episode, like that worked too because right. it's set during during a wartime and was an anthology show. So like the whole the whole aesthetic of the show, you know, revolves around that. Right, I agree. There was such a big scale for the prequel trilogy, uh, and I think part of that large scale is what made it hard to kind of understand some of the time. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I, I think you're right. Like it, it really had to feel like an extension of the the prequel trilogy. Uh, and then Dr. Holocron says, "How do you feel about watching the show in chronological order versus release order?" So it, there, here's some irony for you. Um, I'm a big believer in uh, watching the films chronologically instead of release order, and I will like defend that with all of all of my everything. Um, but then I pretty much only watch Clone Wars in release order, uh, and I refuse to watch it in chronological because I refuse to jump around that much. Like yeah. I just it's straight. I refuse to watch a couple of episodes and then click over here and then click over here and click over here. If Disney Plus created a like a playlist of like um, chronological, then I would watch it that way. Okay, so if you were watching this live, we took some kind of hit from YouTube and it wouldn't let us stream. Um, and rather than figure out why, uh, we're going to pick up here and we're just going to record. Um, so this will be... The rest of the stream you didn't get to see uh, if you were watching this live. Yeah, we've decided we want to end the stream on our own terms yes. rather than having it canceled. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So you were, when the stream died, you were in the process of saying, 
um, prequel trilogy was on such a large scale uh, and that it right. works for Clone Wars to be on such a big scale. And that's what it, with it being an anthology series and that sort of thing. Right. Uh, and then we were talking about whether or not we like to watch it in chronological order. Yes. Um, as well, too. Um, I, I personally don't um, for, for the same reason that you said. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I don't know if this was in what we recorded or not, but I don't I don't want to have to like click around a lot. Yeah. Um, either to like say, oh, here's this one episode of the Battle of Christophsis. Let me mm-hmm. go through and then, you know, two seasons later, pick up this other episode and then go back and then yep. do this one. Um, yep. Especially since the end of the battle is the first thing we see. Right. Um, but um, yeah. at the same time, I don't I don't think it really affects the storytelling of it either. Mm-hmm. Is another reason like I I'm disinclined to do it just because I don't feel like it 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 matters. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't feel like like I don't feel like it makes it confusing to to say hey this Senate episode happened before that Senate episode. Right. Like I don't feel like it it introduced a lot of problems into the watching of it. Yeah, um, like the only thing, the most, the w- what you mentioned with the with the Battle of Christophsis, I think is the most glaring issue where you're almost watching it in reverse. Because like you get the movie and then you get the prequel, which is them getting to Christophsis, or right. them fighting Ventress there, the hidden enemy with the the clone trader, and then you get the one before even that with Admiral Trench. Um, right. Other than that, most of the stuff is like one of the episodes with Jar Jar. He's with a senator, and that senator dies. And then there's a different episode where you see that senator in the background because it takes place before that. And I talk to people who are like, people are going to get confused because the character who was dead is alive. I'm like, first of all, anybody who cares enough to notice that cares enough to read, because they made episode guides at the time, they also care enough to read the episode guides so they'll have it explained to them. Yeah. You know, 70% of the people watching the show aren't going to notice it's the same character. <laughs> yeah. So it's not going to confuse them. Um, so that I I think that's largely true. I guess because I have never watched them in chronological, I can't for sure say that. I think the only example really is season 4, the opener of season or no, the opener of season 5 is um the Mall Savage episode. And then yeah. they go to a whole bunch of other stuff, and then it ends with Maul and Savage. And I think they specifically did that because they wanted like a big show opener, and they didn't have right. a season opener, so they made it Maul and Savage so they could promote that. And then, even though it was really the first episode of the final arc of the season, and like watching that in chronological order, I think helps because they're literally splitting an arc apart. Where at least with the Christophsis episodes, it's largely individual stories that just happen to be a part of the same campaign. Right. Um, but yeah, I that's how I am. It's just I don't want to click around. Like if Disney Plus could give me a filter that says show me episodes in chronological order instead of release order, I would watch it in chronological order. It's just it's ironic because what I was saying is um, I'm a big believer in watching the films chronologically instead of release order, especially when you put in Solo and Rogue One, because then if you watch them in release order, that's really weird. Uh, right like you're really jumping all over the place but it's just funny to me that i'm like so staunch about chronological order for the films and then clone wars i'm like no ain't nobody got time to sit down and like keep track of like going through now i got to go to the drop down menu for season four and go like right not gonna i'm not doing that i have too many other things other than to like i also think I also think it would be too confusing too to like give you a chronological option because then people who are coming to the show for the first time, I think that would be more confusing mm-hmm. to say why do I have these additional buttons I could pick. Right. Like, um, but it's funny now because my philosophy about watching the films is something I would never do for a television show at all. Yeah. Because now I just want to sit down and just watch whatever film I right. feel like, and and I'm definitely not the type of person to say. I mean, even for a show that I love, like The West Wing, like yeah. I'm not going to sit down and watch like this one episode of The West Wing. Like right. I, I'm going to watch it through, <laughs> and like I would never do that with with a television show. And that's that's. I mean, it, it's partially because I don't have the time to watch, you know, twelve films anymore. Right. Um, or, yeah. Or eleven. Films, really? You yeah. Know, like I I can't I can't do that anymore. So if I'm going to watch Star Wars, I'm going to sit down and watch Revenge of the Sith. Or, right. You know, this is I'm I'm just I'm gonna watch Return of the Jedi today or something like that. Right. 
Well, I do that even with Clone Wars, because this time re-watching Clone Wars coming up on Season 7 was the first time in a long time I sat down and re-watched the series. Because like I, mm-hmm. I said earlier that I owned 1 through 3 on DVD. And so when, it, when there were only three seasons, I would do a lot of re-watches, because there were only three seasons, right. and they were only, like, 20-minute episodes. But then as it got longer, it just, and I, like, got older and had other things going on in my life. Like, the, it was just not feasible um so now even i'll sit down and go you know i feel like watching mortis i'm gonna sit down and watch the mortis arc or right. i feel like watching the yoda arc because i want to talk about force ghosts or something um and i'll go to specific arcs or after solo came out and it had maul in it i went over to a friend's house for the weekend and i showed her all the mandalorian slash maul episodes mm-hmm. um and so that was still a lot of episodes and we were jumping around a lot. Um, but you know, she then also didn't have to sit through all the Senate episodes cause they weren't relevant to, uh, to what was going on. So right. you know, I, even as it is, I still watch the arc. I feel like watching. Right. Now, one thing I've kind of found interesting about, uh, Clone Wars is after in light of how it's revered now, Like, I feel like if you were to go into social spaces, people are like, Clone Wars is, like, generally speaking, maybe this is my own bias, but I feel like the debate is usually there's the people who are, like, standing firm on their ground, Clone Wars is the best series, and, like, Rebels and Resistance are just kiddie compared to Clone Wars. Even though Clone Wars is my favorite of the three, I don't feel that way. I love all three of the series. Uh, But I find it so ironic now that so many people are like, oh, I love the Clone Wars and this Disney era stuff has just been garbage and Clone Wars is great and we love Ahsoka. And I'm like, I remember how hated this show was when it came out. I remember how no one cared about anything. I remember when Mortis is what cracks me up the most is when Mortis came out, those were polarizing. Like those were like Last Jedi love. Like it was a smaller group of people watching it. So it wasn't as widespread. But there were people like me who watched Mortis and loved them. It was like, this changes how I view Star Wars. And there were other people who were like, these episodes are dumb. The, the, the fact that they didn't remember anything that happened at the end is a cop-out. The fact that it's all a metaphor is a cop-out. What even happened? This doesn't make sense. This changes what the dark side means. I don't Like, people hated Mortis. And right. now everyone's like, so it was the world between worlds, which is from Mortis. Like, I mean, Colin Trevorrow's script for nine had mortis in it like yep. it's just so weird to me now this world we live in where and that's where i just anytime anything in star wars is unpopular i'm just like give it time because well and it, it's one of those things too because like you know in, until george left star wars we all yeah. hated george right and then right. as soon as george is gone we were like oh if it's not george it's not real it's star right. wars right and it's funny to me that there are people who argue that but then also won't watch the clone wars because i'm like if you want the most George Lucas involvement in Star Wars. Like the Clone Wars is that. Yep. Like this was a show, I mean, like it's it's Dave Filoni, but it's George Lucas. Yep. And like his name is on every episode and not just as a hey, thanks for creating this. Yep. You know, this world that we get to play in kind of thing. And like like it's right there. Like why would you not why would you not want this? And like like and I still hear people and, and you know, if this is just a stylistic thing that's really a hurdle for you, then you yeah. may not be able to just overlook it, but I still hear, hear people talk about the animation yep. of it. And I'm like, really? It's like 10 years later now. Like, <laughs> like, you like Star Wars enough. Like, wh- why would you not say, oh, I will watch this, even though, I mean, because like Resistance wasn't my preferred style right. of animation. Not and mine I loved either. Resistance, yeah. And I watched it because I like Star Wars. Yeah. And, and I don't mean that in a gatekeepy way, but I'm like, if you really enjoy Star Wars, why would you deny yourself Star Wars? Yeah. Well, like, I don't. My thing, my thing is, like, I get if, like, the animation is something, like, I don't like the micro series animation, and me not liking the animation in the micro series, which I know is blasphemy, but I'm sorry, it's how I feel. Anakin has armpit hair, and it grosses me out, and I can't watch it. I'm sorry. It's just how it is. Um, <laughs> but, like, I don't spend all day every day going, guys, but don't you see how the 2008 series is better than the micro series because the animation's better? Like, I haven't made... Like, I don't spend every waking second reminding you that I don't like the micro series animation. Like, I just, I watched it once so I could see what it is. 
you know, it, I'm never going to be like, how dare you put this on? But I don't really, other than like the Mace Windu part, which is the only part that is canon, um, it's like, I, I don't really go back and watch any of it ever. And, uh, but it's fine. Like, I'm not like, about it. And like, that's the part that, that gets me about any of the shows. When it's something like, I still don't like the animation. It's like, okay, I got it. I understood that. <laughs> like, and I, I don't like to slam people who take the time to leave us comments because leaving any kind of comment is so helpful to a YouTube video. But like, there right. was just so many people who came back every week with like, I just don't like how it looks. I just don't like how it looks. I just don't, and I'm like, but it's not going to change. They're not going to like, nope. 16 episodes in, well, we're going to just change the animation style now. Like, I'm sorry you don't like it and you're not wrong to not like it, but then like, stop. <laughs> like, right. Well, and it's like, you know, the Clone Wars was in Cartoon Network's house style. Yep. And Rebels was in Disney's house style. Yep. And then Resistance was in Disney XD's house, house style. style. Like, it's just, like, it's, you know, it's just like Marvel and, and DC Comics. Like, yep. most of their art looks the same because they write, you know, they, they hire artists that are going to render something that's, you know, recognizable. Like, they have a style guide almost. Yep. Like, like visually. And, like, this is how things are supposed to look. And yep. I mean, if you don't, if it doesn't work for you, and like, because I know people that are like, you know, I just can't read comics because I just can't get into it as a medium, and that doesn't right. make sense to me either. But you know, like, I struggled with audiobooks for a long time, and so mm -hmm. like, I, I get it if something's yeah. just not, not for you. Yeah. But assuming that that's not a problem, like, I just don't get why people. I mean, and I say this as somebody that specifically did not like the Clone Wars, that intentionally right. did not watch the Clone Wars. Yep. because I thought it was not something I could get into. Mm -hmm. And I, I try to tell people now, you know, like, look, I was not a fanboy. Like, yeah. I was, I actively did not like this thing. Mm -hmm. And now I do. Like, once I gave it a chance and sat down and said, oh, I want to know what happens, yep. you know, more than just reading a Wikipedia article about it. I want to know, yep. and I want to see it and experience it. And I did. Now I'm I'm a person that's like, nervous with anticipation right. at how excited I am to get more of it tomorrow. Yep. Um, I'm so pumped. And that's, and I think that a lot of people, at least in the this kind of first wave of the show, did come around on it. But like, that's just the, the kind of weird history we live in where Clone Wars was always the most popular thing. It's just hilarious to me. And it's usually being done by like the people who are like, no, Clone Wars is the best show. And anything else is stupid. I'm like, okay, well, if I went back to 2009 and looked what you were writing about Star Wars, what would I find? But what you yep. said about the Clone Wars in 2000, I'd love to know what your 2009 opinion was of Clone Wars. Right. I'm just needing it right now. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know. In another decade, we're going to be nostalgic for, I mean, I'm already nostalgic for more Niku, but, right. you know, we're. <laughs> We're gonna be like, man, remember when it was like Tam and Ezra and yep. like Kanan and Hera and, and Yeager, like, oh, that was just the golden age of Star Wars was Rebels and, and Resistance. Jesus. Yep. Um All right. maybe not maybe not Ezra, but you know. Maybe not Ezra. <laughs> we'll see. Maybe that rumored second Rebels show will eventually endear Ezra to us. It's, I mean, it took Rebels to endear Ahsoka to me, so maybe the second series can do it. You never know. Maybe so. Maybe so. Maybe. Maybe. Well, I think that's... But, um, yeah, so yeah. we're, we're going to be doing episode reviews of this, so yep. uh, as you as you watch uh, these episodes, make sure you're tuning in to uh, our YouTube channel to get our week-by-week our -week reviews of these episodes. And I'm sure we'll be back with another streamcast after, after the fact. Uh, and, and we're already talking about some more Clone Wars content for our streams anyway. So. Yeah, for just going over some of the big arcs that happened um, prior to these. And, and we may, who knows, maybe we'll even break down this season arc by arc. But, uh, yeah. but that, that's that been good. Thank you guys for watching and watching again, if you're watching this over again. Uh, and right, yeah. with us as uh, YouTube did weird things. Um, but uh, yeah, make sure you... Keep it here and check back in, and uh, we'll be up with more stuff next week. Maybe some Project Luminous stuff next week, finally. Hopefully. Fingers and... crossed. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'll we'll talk to you guys soon. Bye. Bye.